If you're developing an application kind of like Cleaver, where there's a lot of server-to-server -server communication, it can be a bit of a struggle to get good, reliable connections back to your local environment. For example, when we're working with Cleaver and we want to provide some real-time updates, such as if I want to add a site right here, and keep in mind I'm on a production environment right now, but the point kind of remains the same. So if I go here and I click on static HTML and just create a very quick site and add that, what I see right here is real-time updates. So right now I can see that the status is queued and then adding site, configuring domain, um, done configuring domain, and it's just going through that installation process and then boom, it's done, it's running. But how do I get this real-time update to show on my local environment? It can be a little bothersome to be honest. We've used tools at Cleaver that help with the local development for things like this, such as ng-rock, local tunnel, expose. But it was always kind of painful, to be honest. Uh, they seem to work for a while, and then all of a sudden they just stop working, and then it becomes troublesome to figure out why it's not working. And then these solutions seem to lose a lot of the benefit of you know what they want to get across, which is being able to do this, to be able to develop easily and quickly, spend more time on development, less time on configuring these type of connections. So what we started doing with Cleaver, and we want to share it with you guys, and we've made a guide on how to do this, is to create your own server that runs the tunneling service to get the information back to your, your local environment. And we've been testing this and doing this for the last several months at Cleaver, and so far the results have been pretty good. We haven't seen that same kind of you know lag after a little while, or the same type of issues that seem to come up with those other solutions that I mentioned before. So let's see how we could do this. I'm gonna delete this site real quick. And I have a fresh server that I just created. It's an Oracle server called Tunneling Server. And the first thing I'm gonna do is actually just add another site. And I'm gonna add a generic port app and then use our temporary domain. And I'm gonna set this to port. Why not use the example right there, 43065, and then click on add. All right, again, from this server to server, we see that real-time status updates. This is the same thing I wanna see in my local environment when I'm coding and adding things in my local environment, such as new servers, new sites, new whatever. I wanna make sure that I have that similar experience on my local environment. So that is what we're trying to duplicate. And after this new generic port app is added, let's click into it. And then we'll go to the configure Nginx section. And then here, we're basically gonna change up our Nginx configurations. There's still some things I wanna refer to, so I'm gonna save a lot of that for now and just push it down and then paste in the new configs that I wanna add in. And I'll post a link to the guide which has this configuration here. And what we'll do is we'll just go through this and update certain things, like we'll change the server name example.cleaver1.com to our actual site name and then also be sure to change the port number. So let's go ahead and do that. That's one reason why I kept this below is because there's no way I was gonna remember the name of the site. If I could just highlight that part, copy it, and then we'll paste it right there. And then let's see if that exists anywhere else. So we wanna just find those references and then paste it over with our actual site name. I think I got them all there. And then the next part is the port number. So we could scroll down a little bit. And then the port number should be visible right here. And I'm gonna copy that. And then where it says port in all caps, I'm just gonna paste in the actual port number. And I believe that is the only reference. Let's give that a check real quick. And okay, I think it looks good. So I could delete all this old stuff. All right, and then I'm just gonna Click on update to save out this new configuration information. Ooh, and it looks like there was something it didn't like, so let's try to look at this real quick and see if we can figure out what it is. It could just be that little space right there. Let's get rid of that space and update. And all right, well, I guess it was just that. And the next place we want to go to is back on the server. And then in SSH, we want to add our SSH key to the server. And if you don't have your key, just uh, make sure you generate an SSH key if you haven't already, and then go in here and then add a new one and assign it to the Cleaver username and then add that in there. Because from here, we're gonna SSH into the server. So I'm gonna open up a new terminal and I'm gonna paste in a command that is also available on the guide. And there's some information that we'll wanna change out. 
So starting with site port, that's gonna be the one that we created for the site. All right, and then we're gonna paste it in there. And my local port, just call it one, two, three, four, five. And then the server user, which is Cleaver. That's how we set it up for this one. And the IP, and then paste it in. And that looks to be correct and should be enough to run the command. From here, what you wanna do is go and update your environment variables to be able to connect to the server. Okay, in your .env file, or however you manage these variables, uh, you put in your information. So for mine, I have tunneling server, that's the variable I'm using, and this should point to the public server IP. And then tunneling site port, that should be updated to the port number that you use in the previous steps. Okay, I'm gonna erase these since I already have them. To run this, basically open up your terminal for your project, and then all you have to do is type in make expose, and then run that, and then you should be good to go. So to give you an example, let me go ahead and run my local project here, and I'll show you what that looks like running on my local. Okay, I have my local environment up and running. Now, to see what this looks like on my local environment, as I'm testing out these features, let's go ahead and add a new server here. So I'm gonna provision that, and then once this starts to run, we go to the server page, we'll see it better here. And then check this out, currently it's provisioning. So what I wanna see, and this might take a little bit of time, uh, the first step right here might be a little longer. But what I wanna see is for this to automatically update in real time, or close to real time. And it's basically going through that, that new server with that telling forwarding service that we created. And boom, there you go. See that live update? That's exactly what I wanna see and perfect for my local environment.